Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media. In this tutorial, we will be taking this particular jewelry and the portrait of this particular woman, and we will be turning it into a product showcase or a jewelry showcase video like the one that you can see in front of you. We are gonna be using four different AI tools for this. It's all gonna start inside ChatGPT AI, then we're gonna move on to Mid Journey, then we're gonna move on to Ideogram's Magic Fill feature, and then finally, we will be using Kling AI. So all these heavyweight AI tools will be working together as a team to achieve this. In order to start the process, first of all, we will need two very important images which will ultimately be converted into videos inside Kling AI. These two images are the images that you can see in front of you. So let's start the tutorial with how to create such images. We're gonna start with the image with the zoomed out version where you can see the woman and the jewelry also. So this process started off in ChatGPT because Initially, it was just an idea in my head and I wanted to create such an image inside Mid Journey. So I started talking to ChatGPT just by using the dictate option here because that's usually faster to communicate your ideas and get the final prompts you can see here. So I want to create this video. Ultimately, I need an image and there's a woman who is displaying some jewelry. So initially, I wasn't even bothered about the consistency of the character of that particular woman that you uh, had seen before. Because my first idea was to just get the composition and the framing correct. And then we can use the Omni reference feature inside Mid Journey to get exactly that woman also in the uh, image like I'm going to be showing you later. So initially, this was just the starting parts. And it gave me a pretty good prompt. So it gave me this long prompt, which when I went over to Mid Journey, I started using it and I started getting images like these ones. And this didn't look bad, but what I wanted was I wanted a showcase like video where there was a podium like this. So again, I went back to chat GPT and I started telling it about this. So it should be like that the woman is pointing with both her hands to, you know, jewelry, which is kept on a podium like surface. So sometimes to get to the image, you just have to do these things. If you don't have a reference image or you're not 100% clear, uh, you know, what's in your mind. It's just a trial and error process. And you can see this time it modified the prompt. Then again, I said the gesturing should only be done with one hand because when it was both the hands, I started using that same prompt. I started getting images like this and I wasn't really liking this. Uh, gesture. So I wanted it just with one hand. So when it gave me the one hand prompt, this is when things started working for me. So you can see uh, some of the new images which started from this one. And this started to look slightly better. Okay, so finally I started to get something that I was liking. And I think it was this image where it was very close to what I had in my mind. Now, the only issue left for me to solve was that this woman was not the woman from our reference image. So now it was very easy because I had finally achieved, you know, such a shot which I liked. I basically then went to the image that I liked and I just clicked on this option that says use text, basically our original prompt. And this time I use the Omni reference feature which you can access by hitting the images icon. And then I basically had this particular image so I can just drag it over here. I left the Omni reference weight at 100. If this is the first time you're seeing Omni reference to create consistent characters, make sure you watch my dedicated video where I introduced this tool when it came out. In that video, I covered this more in detail, but basically you put the image, you choose how much weightage you wanna to give to the uh, image here. So I chose the default value, which is 100, and then I generated the images. And that's where I started to get, let me just close this down. I started to get uh, images in which, you know, we started to get this woman and that composition also. I just used the uh, variation feature here with some subtle variations, and I started to get some different results here. Ultimately, the result that I liked was the first one that I had got, which was uh, this one. So I really liked this particular result. Now, one of the things that I wanted to do here was uh, with this particular image, I wanted to increase its resolution because ultimately my idea was that when I take it over to Kling AI, the animation is gonna be something that zooms in towards the jewelry as she gestures towards the jewelry. Therefore, 
the resolution needed to be slightly sharp since we were going to zoom in to this particular image. So here, what I did was I basically used the subtle upscale feature here, which kind of makes everything much more sharper and increases the resolution, but it doesn't change anything in the image. Do not use the creative upscaler when consistency is an issue because otherwise it's going to change the image. So let me show you both uh, the results here. What happened when I use the creative upscaler and what happened when I use the subtle upscaler. So if I go back here, this was the result with the creative upscaler. And you can see here, if I just zoom in, it, it did change the face a bit. So it didn't look like the woman in the reference picture. So then what I did was I went back and the, for the last time, I just used the subtle upscaler where I got this image and now it was really sharp. Everything was very, very clear and most importantly, it did not change her face while upscaling. So this particular base image now was ready. Now I had to move on to the next step, which was to replace the jewelry on this showcase item to our original jewelry. This is where I use the magic fill feature inside ideogram. Now, again, if you haven't seen my original video on using magic fill, this is the one I leave the links to all these reference videos in the description of the video also, because there I go much more slowly here. I'm just going to quickly show you how I did this. So first of all, I'm going to upload this image that we just made inside mid journey. And also we're going to upload the uh, normal looking, ordinary looking image of our jewelry. So let's do that. All right now that we have both these images, all we have to do is just make sure that this jewelry image is right next to this one. We can just slightly crop it till the time we can see the main parts and we can zoom out so that we can see more of the canvas here and something like this is fine. Then we're going to hit magic fill and we have to draw over the parts, or create a mask of what we want to replace this uh, with. So that mask will be right in this area since that's where this has to come in. I can use the brush mask here, slightly zoom in and just paint over this area. And then I just need to hit the next button and I need to just describe what is on the left here and what is on the right here. Now here, because it's a a piece of jewelry, you really have to be very descriptive. So what I can write is on the left is, and now I don't need to fill this manually. I can go to a website like imageprom.org and I can use the image to prompt feature. I'll leave the link to this in the description. And here I just uploaded this image of the jewelry to get the description. Then I clicked on this option that says generate prompt. And I basically got this long prompt, which I can now copy here. And then I can just, at the end, I can also describe the image on the right. There you don't need to be too specific. So I can say on the right is a professional image of a woman displaying jewelry. So that should be fine, just a general description. And then finally, I can just move this frame, the pink frame that you get in such a way that it uh, encompasses both the mast area as well as the thing that is going to get replaced by that is this jewelry and something like this is fine and I can hit the magic fill option. So let's just wait for the results here. And you can see that our result is ready here. I can click on this frame again, check all the four results. So this is the first one here. It's slightly small that stone and so I think first and four are good. Sometimes you'll just have to hit the retry option. But finally, when I did it a couple of times, I was very happy with this final image that I got. And this is ultimately going to get converted into the video inside Kling. So our first image was ready. But that video that you saw was formed by two images. Remember, we, I also showed you the second image, which was the close up of this particular showcase item that you, you are seeing along with the jewelry. So how did I create this? I use chat GPT for this. So let me show you what I did. So I went over to chat GPT. I uploaded both the images here, the one that we got out of ideogram and the one of our original piece of jewelry. And I, then I just said, create an image only for the showcase where the redstone jewelry is placed. The jewelry is like the one in the uploaded image. And then finally, because I wanted this item, it gave me the combo of both. And this was going to be the second image that we're going to use inside Kling to make that video. 
I also needed the prompts to turn these images into video. For that, also I use ChatGPT, so I uploaded the image here, and I just said create a prompt for this image to be converted into a video in Kling AI, where this woman is showcasing the red jewelry kept on the table. And you can see that it gave me a real, really detailed prompt that we're gonna soon be using in Kling. Similarly, I asked ChatGPT even for the second frame, this one that you know, create some sort of a left to right movement and also the camera starts to zoom in and there should be a sparkle on the jewelry. It kind of understood what I wanted and it gave me a really uh, detailed prompt here also. So now everything was ready. We basically had both the images with the motion prompts also. So finally now it was time to go over to Kling. So inside Kling, first of all, for the first part of the video, I uploaded this particular image. I used the motion prompt given by ChatGPT. And let me show you some of the results that I started to get because it did involve a bit of trial and error. So this was the first result I got. And somehow this just didn't look good at all because it just straight away zoomed into the jewelry. Then I started just making a few changes. Sometimes you have to do that in the prompt that maybe I would uh, say something like she's moving one of her hands, okay? And when I started doing that, I this was the result I got and I was very happy with this one. But the only problem here, as you can see, was that, uh, you know, it was not really pointing at this part of the jewelry. Like it's more like if this was right here, this would have been perfect. Because if you see the animation, it was absolutely spot on and she looked very, very real. So uh, this was great. So what I did here was that I basically needed to move this particular item here. So I quickly went over to Photoshop and in the original image that I had, I just moved this from this part to this part of the table. If you don't know how to do that, I've actually explained something similar, how you can use the AI generative fill feature inside Photoshop to quickly do this within with like two clicks. If you haven't seen this video, check this one out because towards the end of this video, that's where I demonstrate this technique, um, which doesn't involve any sort of manual compositing at all. You can just use the AI tools in Photoshop to do this. So I'll again, I'll leave the link to this video also in the description. And then finally, I had the new image so you can see I was trying it a couple of times with the old image, the hand just wasn't coming right here. So again, I changed the image and can you see this time I moved it right here and this time it just looked much, much better. So you can see, right, sometimes things are not very straightforward. You really have to just go through a lot of trial and error because you only realize these things when, you know, you actually see the uh, final output. But at this point, I was pretty happy with the result that I was getting. So it was time for me to move on to the second frame where I did the same thing. I basically uploaded that close up image that ChatGPT had generated for us. Then I uploaded the same prompt that ChatGPT had generated for us, the motion prompt. And this was pretty straightforward. I was happy with not the starting part of this video. If you look at this, it didn't really create any movement because I had asked it to create a left to right panning movement. It didn't do that, but I was okay with that because the next movement after it zooms in, this was really nice. You can see it was a very uh, slow motion like uh, movement. And the good part was I just loved how it produced the sparkle on the stone there. So just look at this again. And you can see that I was pretty happy with this. And finally, of course, you know, you can do this in any video editing software. I did it in Premiere Pro, but I just combined these two videos and this was the final result again. Also, just as an additional point, I was trying to also see how Pika will do this uh, animation because Pika and uh, Kling are pretty much rivals here. This was the result I got with, with the same prompt with Pika and I think the result with Kling just looked much better because if you see the uh, woman here in this particular video generated by Pika, she looked very AI-ish and also the expression that she was giving in this, you can see right here, just didn't look natural. Also the whole zooming in motion didn't look uh, too good. But I do plan to create a future video where, where I will be comparing the tools side by side, both in Kling as well as in Pika to see which one comes out on top. So in case this video helped you out, do give it a like. And if you want to follow along all my experiments in the AI image and video editing world, then make sure you subscribe and I will see you next time.